Today we're going to talk about what do the SWAN numbers mean, okay? If you're on the cardiac rotation, you're sure to be using SWANs. And it's a good idea to know exactly what the numbers mean. So what this video is going to do is over the next few minutes, is going to explain to you how we really work in a practical way with the numbers that the SWAN gives us. Now the SWAN, I will tell you, is a very controversial thing, okay? Since its introduction in 1970, we thought this is the greatest thing known to man. This gives us all kinds of information. Surely this must be helping patients. But as early as 1990, people were questioning whether people were even trained in how to use this thing. And then large studies in 2003 and in 2005 pointed out that in the all-important realm of outcomes, swans actually did not improve outcomes. So this has come under a lot of fire lately, and rightfully so. But if you're going to have a swan in, you should at least know how the numbers work. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about exactly how the heart works, how the swan numbers reflect how the heart is working, and then we're going to change the values around a little here as a patient does better and worse so that you get a feel for what these numbers actually mean. The most important thing to consider when you're looking at swan numbers is the ratio. You really want to think about the ratio, okay? Here we have a normal patient, PA numbers 26 over 10, okay, gives us a blood pressure of 120 over 83, okay, that's pretty good, okay. What is the ratio? The ratio is, oh, 1 to 5 or so, okay, 1 to 5. Well, what does that mean to us in a practical sense? What that says is, the heart, when it's not overly filled, is able to generate a pretty good pressure, okay? In effect, what you're doing is you are drawing your own starling curve. At a relatively low filling pressure, you're able to generate a pretty good pressure, okay? The ratio of one to five tells you that you're in good shape, okay? Now, let's change things around a little bit, okay? And just one thing at a time. I'm going to give you congestive heart failure, you could say. We're going to keep the blood pressure the same, but I'm going to have to fill the heart way up, really fill it up, in order to generate this much pressure. Nothing subtle here. This is not a subtle change at all. You have the same blood pressure, 125 over 80, pretty good pressure. I think we'd all be very happy with that, okay? But look at what those PA pressures are doing. It's alarming. The thing can't even stay on the scale, okay? It takes a blood pressure, uh, filling pressure of 72 over 58 to generate a pressure of 123. How does that work out in terms of ratios? Well, it's, it's almost like 1 to 1.5, okay? That is a tremendously filled heart. You can imagine this heart would just be tremendously filled up, okay, to have such high pressures, okay? The right heart is working tremendously against very high pulmonary vascular resistance from any of a number of reasons. A million reasons could explain this, but this just gives you an idea of what the numbers mean. Okay, now we're back to a healthy patient, okay? And now think again of the ratios, okay? So we got a nice pressure of 120 over 80, and we have a PA of 26 over 10. Our ratio is roughly 1 to 5, okay? Certainly different than the one I just talked about where the ratio was like 1 to 1.5, okay? Tremendously filled heart to be able to generate that same pressure. Let's just take it the other way a little bit. Let's leave the PA pressures the same, but not generate as much blood pressure, okay? And this might reflect someone who has a okay heart, but it maybe needs a little more filling. We have a hypotensive patient. We have a patient whose pressure is 82 over 54. The alarm's going off, telling us something's in trouble, okay? And the PA pressures are quote, normal, okay? I always say quote because who knows what his baseline pressure is. Maybe his baseline pressure is much higher. Maybe this is someone who has pulmonary hypertension and 25 over 10 doesn't represent a normal pressure. Maybe a normal pressure has to be much higher to generate a filling pressure, okay? If we go back to that common theme, which you can always hang on to, the ratio, we now have a ratio of about one to three Okay, one to three, maybe one to four, okay? So the ratio is worse. You could say the starling curve is worse. Okay, so here we are with a normal patient. We have a nice ratio, one to five, okay? And uh, all is well, okay? We make a mistake, we give a bunch of neo by mistake, oopsie. So now the pressure's gonna go way up. And we'll see what happens with the PA pressures when that happens, if the starling curve stays the same. Oops, stupid me, I gave a bunch of neo. I thought I was giving fentanyl. I shot the guy's pressure through the roof. Okay, the surgeon is ripping out my heart, 
and getting all ticked off at me. But here's again where you go back to the idea of the ratios. The ratios help you understand what's going on. The pressure is 212. The PAs are elevated now relative to what they were before. They're 44 or so. But the ratio is still the same. If you multiply 45 by about 5 or so, you know, 4 or 5, you get about this number. Okay, the numbers don't stay exactly the same, but the ratio stays the same. Okay, so you've overfilled the heart. The SVR is very high. This goes up, this goes up too, but the ratio stays the same. Okay, that's really how you want to use your PA. Keep an eye on those ratios. Okay, now what I'm going to do is create a metabolic problem. Okay, where we're going to change the Starling curve. Okay, so we're back to our healthy patient. And we, the Neo's worn off and all is well. So we're back and we have our ratio. Okay, so our ratio is telling us our Starling curve. This is a guy that has a pretty good Starling curve, about a one to five ratio. Well, darn it, but he aspirated on induction. Okay, so now we're gonna get a hypo, we're gonna develop hypoxemia. And what happens with hypoxemia? Well, like anything else with the heart, the heart depends on a good metabolic state. So if we now create a hypoxemic state for the heart, what's going to happen? Well, all the bad stuff is going to happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how that all-important ratio, the ratio we're always talking about, changes and sort of goes into what you could almost call the death spiral. Well, okay, a disaster has befallen us, okay? And what has happened? Well, the patient's gotten hypoxemic. Okay, hypoxemic from aspiration in this case. Of course, 101 causes exist for this. So what has happened now? Our heart, our heart is failing, okay? The heart is not getting the oxygen that it needs. So no surprise, the Starling curve, which was pretty good before, one to five ratio, has gone way down. The heart, the cardiac performance is bad. That will be reflected in the PA numbers and the arterial pressure. We have a blood pressure of only 78 over 44, okay? A very low hypotensive state here. And our PA pressures are very high. Look, once again, they'd have to change the scale to even fit them on. The PA pressures are 59 over 40, okay? That represents what? It remembers a tremendously dilated heart that's not able to generate, because it's hypoxemic, not able to generate much of a pressure. If we go back to our old friend, the ratio, what is the ratio telling us? Well, the ratio again here is about 1 to 1.5, 1.2, something like that. And that's not anywhere near the 1 to 5 when the patient was... Uh, getting good oxygen and their metabolic state was just fine, okay? So the heart is just muscle. The heart is just muscle tissue. And if it doesn't have oxygen, if it doesn't have glucose, it doesn't have a good pH status or a good metabolic state, okay, then no surprise, its performance suffers. That is reflected in these PA numbers, okay? While you're on cardiac, what you will do is you will be seeing lots of blood pressures and lots of PA pressures, and you'll be working with these ratios all the time. The main thing to keep in mind is that ratio. What was the ratio before? What's the ratio now? What would explain it, okay? Could it be a primary cardiac event that explains it? Maybe the heart's ischemic. Could it be a metabolic event that explains it? Like here, where hypoxemia has caused very poor cardiac performance, okay? So that is what you do with the PA numbers, okay? Think of the ratio, think of the ratio, and you'll always get a good handle on exactly what those PA numbers mean.